Prior to Keto, one of our favorite places to go out to eat, especially on Sundays after church, was Golden Corral. And it wasn't because they had great pot roast and it wasn't for their meatloaf. We went there because they had our favorite dessert and that was banana pudding. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews and we do recipe videos. Mm -hmm. We talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So like I said, prior to keto, we loved going to Golden Corral. And though they had that chocolate fondue fountain, that was never really my jam. No. I wanted the banana pudding because I love banana pudding and the only thing I love more than banana pudding is banana cream pie. Well, I grew up with banana pudding also because my great grandmother had a very famous recipe in our family. And so, and it had to have vanilla wafers. Yes. That was non-negotiable. So, you know, whether it was the holidays or family reunion, we always had banana pudding around. So recently we've kind of been playing around with Maria Emmerich's egg pudding recipe, which if you haven't seen that, I'm gonna leave a link for that actual video right up here. And that recipe is made using hard boiled eggs. And we have fallen in love with it because it's very low carb, it's very high in protein because you're using hard boiled eggs. And we've taken that, we've put in some suggestions from other people like Chris from Keto Chow, and messed with it a little bit on our own, adding a couple of ingredients. And we've come up with a banana cream pie, which is something I didn't think we would ever have on keto. I thought that our banana days were over and I'm very, very happy about this because honestly, the finished product really reminds me of the banana pudding I grew up with. Yeah, now this is a very, very easy recipe. How easy is it? This one really is so easy that even Rachel can make it. Yay! Are I'm, you ready? I am so excited about this and I feel like I am making my great grandmother proud. Okay, so let's go over what we're gonna need because you're gonna need a couple of different things. First thing you're gonna need is some type of pie crust. I really like a pie crust with my banana cream pie, even though I'm okay with not having crust on other things like cheesecakes. For a banana cream pie, it really needs to have a pie crust. So I'm gonna leave a link down below for our coconut flour pie crust. It's the best. I honestly think, I know I made it. I think it is the best pie crust and even non-keto people will like it. You can honestly just take it and put it on a cookie sheet and eat it like a cookie. It's that good. I love it even as a cookie, like so, a sugar cookie. And that's a very, very simple pie crust to make too. Now the crust recipe that I have linked down below will actually give you one of two things. It'll give you two of these, these shallow pie crusts, or it'll give you one deep one and you can do either one for this recipe. You're gonna wanna make just two of them because that's how much mixture you're gonna have anyway. Yeah. But that's the first thing you're gonna need. Now you don't even have to use our pie crust recipe. You could use something like lollies and crush it in below. Oh yes. But this is like a really buttery, flaky pie crust. So that's the first thing you're gonna need. After that, you only need a few ingredients. You're going to need 10 eggs, which you're going to scramble. I found this works better than hard boiled eggs. I've tried it both ways. The flavor comes out better if you use scrambled eggs. So make sure you just take your 10 eggs, scramble them, don't overcook them. You don't want them like runny, but you don't want them like overcooked and dry. After that, you're gonna need one can of coconut milk. Now I've tried this with other types of milk. It works, but not as good as if you use a can of coconut milk. You're gonna need one serving of Keto Chow Banana. So that's either one scoop or one package. Yeah, now if you're gonna do the scoop, I'm gonna advise you to, even though I don't normally do this, weigh go it. ahead and weigh it out because you wanna make sure you have enough because the more Keto Chow you have, the thicker the pudding's gonna get. And if you just do that scoop and you don't add enough in there, it may be a little bit more runny than if you're using a full serving. And you want it thick. Then we're gonna need a, a half a cup of Swerve, which is powdered erythritol. Don't use granular, it won't work. It'll be really grainy and the texture won't be that good. 
I've tried it with allulose. It works, but it's not as good as if you use Swerve. Now, if you go back, we have talked about in some of our vlogs where you can use um, ha half of the Swerve and only use a quarter of a cup, and then you can use like a liquid sucralose or something like that. That works just as well, but I've really found after messing with this recipe, a half a cup is perfect. It gives you the perfect texture and the perfect sweetness. And we want it perfect. The last thing you're gonna need, and I'm gonna leave a link for this down below, is banana emulsion. So it's kind of like a, an extract, but it's thicker. They do put glycerin in there to give it that thickness. This really adds an amazing banana flavor. It tastes really good in the cake itself or in the pie itself, but don't try to have it on its own because it is not sweet at all. No. And then, honestly, you can do without this, but it's not a banana cream pie without it. Not in my family. You need some high key vanilla wafers. And again, I will leave a link for them down below. They're actually available on Amazon. When we were decided to make this video, we ordered them and they were here in five hours. Yeah. Are you ready? I'm so ready. Okay, so let's push all that to the side. I just wanna add that the banana emulsion, the taste that it adds, that flavor, makes it taste like real bananas. It, versus it is like, not candied banana it's flavor. It's not can candy banana, yeah. Okay, so you're going to need a high speed blender. You can do this in a food processor, but don't try to do it with like a beater or something like that you won't get the right texture. So we've got our Vitamix and I put away the stainless steel container we have so that you can see exactly what we're doing over here. Uh, but this is the bigger container. It works just as well with the small container. We usually use this one just for keto chow. Okay, so in your blender, what you're gonna do is you're going to add 10 scrambled eggs. And again, they're pretty, they're, they're not like super runny, but they're not like hard. They're not overcooked. They're not Rachel eggs. And again, this recipe is really stemming from Maria Emmerich's recipe. So full credit goes to her and other people who have suggested things like using scrambled eggs instead of the hard boiled eggs. Again, it tastes good with the hard boiled eggs when you're making the chocolate pudding, but the farty smell, that's gotta go. This eliminates that. Yeah. Okay, from there, you're going to add in one can of coconut milk. I found this at uh, Whole Foods, and I feel like you really want to make sure that you're getting the organic coconut, the purified water, not a bunch of extras. Yeah, and you definitely want the can over like the carton you get in the store. The carton you get in the store has a lot of added ingredients, and I find it's much more watery than buying the canned ones. Also, don't use coconut cream. There's a huge difference. Then we're gonna add in a half a cup of Swerve. Ah, Florida. The humidity is wonderful here. I just realized I don't have the lid. Let me grab you the lid. Oh yeah. I got the lid. You're gonna want that for this one. Yes. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and turn that on and get it going. And it's gonna look chunky, don't worry about that. It looks really gross. Take off the lid now. To that, we're gonna add one serving of keto chow. Again, use the banana. And then one and a half teaspoons of banana emulsion. We can put our top back on. Put your top on. And then go ahead and turn it up and gonna blend this until it's very smooth. Okay, there we go. So the pudding is done. Now, I'm gonna tell you, this pudding is good just like this. You yeah. can pour it into a glass jar, let it sit overnight, just a few hours actually, and it's got an amazing banana texture if you just want banana pudding. It already smells good too, which is a refreshing change. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take two pie crusts and we're gonna fill them about halfway with each one of them with the banana pudding. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of these high key Nella wafers and we're just going to add them throughout the pie. So I'll give you a bunch. And just kind of push them down in there. Why are you trying to be pretty? I want it to be pretty. 
Then we're gonna take the rest of the mixture and we're gonna put it over the top of them. I love that you've got a vanilla wafer treasure hunt going on <laughs> inside of this pie. Well, isn't that how banana pudding is supposed yes. to be? Yes. We can lick that later. Mm -hmm. Here you go. How does it taste? Oh my gosh. It's already delicious, which is nice. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna put this into the refrigerator and let it set. One thing I do want to say, if you're trying to make two pies like this, you might want to do like one and a half recipes. It's completely up to you. Um, you can see that it doesn't quite fill the pie crust when you're doing two of them, but it also is going to depend on how shallow your pie crusts are. So we're going to put these in the refrigerator and then we'll come back. Now this is how we like to make it in a deep dish pie crust. Why? More pudding. We like a Costco looking pie. Like this is a nice presentation we can bring. And also we don't like the crust to go over the edge because I feel like I'm losing some. I want right. to make sure that every bite I've got plenty of crust and pudding yeah. distribution. So what we do is when you're getting ready to serve it, go ahead and get some whipped cream. You can use some of the store-bought whipped creams if you're okay with those, or you could mix some up in a blender or you know with a beater or something like that or you can actually just use a whipped cream canister, which is what I do. This, I usually fill it up about three quarters of the way. It's a little bit less than a quart of heavy whipping cream. I put a few drops of sucralose in there and then a few drops of vanilla and it makes amazing whipped cream. And then take a little bit more of the vanilla wafers and put them on top just for decoration. To pretty it up. You wanna try this? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Give you a fork. Now I will say we've actually tried this banana pudding. Not with the crust. Not with the crust, but we've tried the banana pudding on the kids and they loved it. Even Caleb said, if you do not Lion King this, there is no way that anybody's even gonna know that it is sugar free. And they're certainly not gonna know that it's predominantly made out of eggs. Okay, so this is actually a big piece. This is like a double serving. I hate getting the first piece of pie out, don't you? It's so hard. Okay. And we've had those slicers before, it still don't work for us. Okay, let's add a little bit more whipped cream to that. Cause why not? Why not? There we go. So pretty. I think it makes a really nice presentation. You can see all of the Nilla wafers on the inside and it's just super fun. You ready? Yeah. Go ahead. I want some of the Nilla wafer. Oops, so I'm going to take mine out of the middle. <laughs> Oop, I got some on the side here. Oop, that's a big piece. I'm going to dink it. Dink. Dink. Wow. Wow. You would swear there's actual bananas in here. Here's that the thing. so good. And I'm sorry, the Nella wafers make it. The, the Nella wafers make it and also your pie crust, babe. Like, I love this pie crust. I need another piece. It works with everything. Hey, I just realized we're in the middle of testing ourselves with heavy whipping cream. Oh, oh, it's happening right now. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. That is so, so good. This is going to be a family favorite. You want to go over macros? Mm -hmm. Now again, macros are going to be completely based on the ingredients you use. We highly suggest you put everything in a chronometer using the ingredients that you use depending on the company that you're getting them from and, yeah. and what's in that. But if you were to divide this pie into 16 servings, so either an eighth of one of the shallow ones or two of, you know, one of these here having it into 16, again, this is like a double serving. A slice is going to be 183 calories, 14 grams of fat, 7 grams of protein, 14.5 total carbohydrates. But of that, 3.5 grams is fiber, which is coming really from the coconut flour. Right. And then we have 9.5 grams of sugar alcohols, which is the swerve, making it 1.8 net carbs. For a really delicious treat. Yeah. And again, also don't forget that, you know, you're... Keto Chow is adding an acacia fiber, which I am completely fine deducting, as well as the coconut fiber from, you know, the uh, the fiber from the coconut. But overall, for a dessert, I don't think it's bad. This is I'm not something we would eat impressed. every single day. No. But it is an amazing thing. And again, I love it just as a pudding if you don't want to make it into a pie. Yeah. Now let us know down in the comment section if you make this. And also while you're down there, 
Let us know what is your favorite pie, either now that you're on keto or before you were on keto. If you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over there. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we have a new recipe, you'll be alerted to it. Till tomorrow. Bye. Bye.